Hey everyone. So you all know that every now and then I come across stuff on the internet that people are selling and brushes and you know, stitch brushes and jewelry brushes and stuff like that. And it kind of annoys me that people are selling this rather than actually just giving it away. So I was looking for some dragon scales recently and realized I couldn't find any decent tiling dragon scales online. So I decided to create my own and I'm going to release them here for free. So this video is going to show you how I made them and then also uh, you know, if you want to make your own, um, I'll give the file away that I use to make them and I'll show you uh, how to use them in your projects as well. So first off, I went to this guy, Tan Tien Hai's, I probably butchered his name or her name, I don't know, who has written this plugin for free, or macro rather, so an auto tiling seamless uh, macro for, plugin for ZBrush, which is really cool. So basically he goes through the installation instructions in the video here, but once you have it installed, you if you go to your macros menu up here, you see that you basically have it uh, here, now I've just docked this macro menu over here to the side so we can actually use it here. But essentially what you, what you get is this TTH directory. And inside that you'll see this Z tiling. And inside that there's three different sections. So there's brush tiling, edit mesh and tiling object. So the brush tiling is for creating a, a brush, uh, which we're not going to do today, but we are going to use this edit mesh and, and tiling object. So the edit mesh, basically, when you create your object, and I've created um, a whole lot of different scales here. They're just basically uh, very simple scales aligned to the world here. Um, I'll go down through them. You can see that they're all for different sizes and depths and stuff like that. And they're also collapsed. So these were originally low resolution meshes. Just to show you here, if I go down to geometry and I recreate, or I go down to the low subdivision, it's basically very, very simple pieces of geometry, which I've then divided up to that. The reason I actually use divisions rather than dynamic subdivisions is because if you use dynamic subdivisions, it will turn them off during the process. So you have to have, actually have a DynaMesh or a uh, real subdivisions on your mesh or, or no subdivisions, but enough density. But you can't rely on dynamic subdivisions being a thing. So that's it. I've basically gone through and I've made these different shapes of different scales or potential scales. And when you make them, it's important that they're square. So what he's done here is actually he's under edit mesh, you can actually hit this fix square button and it will basically resize it to be square. So if your mesh was this size and you hit fix square, he basically the, the script, the macro will actually make it square for you. And edit mesh will actually show you what that will look like when you put it together. Now at this point, when you set it mesh, it's effectively, it's just using an array mesh with three different stages. So he starts out the first stage, he takes five copies and moves them off on the x-axis. And then the second stage, he pushes them down again on the y and again, up to the top. So these are the, this array mesh is effectively all that's actually going on. And you can see that this is the mesh that's actually being edited. So while this is on, we could change to a move tool, for example, and start modifying this to generate whatever shapes that we want to generate, uh, which is really cool. So you can start playing around with this. Now, there is another plane in here. I have, I am basically in solo mode. I'm going to turn that off. So this plane is something that he uses to actually generate how it's going to fit. Now the thing about this is I have found that this script, while it was excellent, this is it here. I did change a few lines just because I found that some of the results weren't quite the, uh, the way I would like them to be. So basically I changed a couple of values here. Um, I don't remember which ones now. This is his one here at the original, and I literally just copied and pasted the whole thing. And rather than offsetting down to a hundred, I think I offset down to eighty on the, on a few of these axes. And here, instead of minus twenty five, I went down to minus twenty. So very few little differences, but just enough to to get me the results that I was looking for. So if I go back to there, we can turn this off to see what this is like without this and and on. But it doesn't really matter as long as this was square in the first place. When we hit the at fix square, you can go down to your tiling object and then you can say just tiling object and that will just run this script. So I was going to actually take this file. So I currently have 16 different variations in here. I'll delete this plane. This is, should be here. So I have 16 different variations and whichever one I have selected, I'll just go into solo mode here so we can just see one. So I just, I have this one currently selected. When I hit tiling object, it's a good idea to save this scene first because you're going to have to open this up again because it basically resets the whole of ZBrush uh, to create this thing for you. So save the scene and then you just hit the tiling object. It resets ZBrush. 
there's a whole lot of voodoo behind the scenes. It's a very cool little script and thank you very much to the guy who wrote it or the person who wrote it. Very much appreciated. So you can see this is what it's generated. It's a 2000 by 2000 pixel image, uh, black and white alpha. Um, if you click on this, then you can choose to export that as a PSD, a TIFF or a BMP somewhere, which is really cool. So this is what I've done. I basically then, once I've done that, then I reopened the scene. I went to the second one and I hit this button, this tidying object button one more time. So effectively that's how we, I got the results of the alphas that you're going to get here in the pack. So if you go to my Gumroad page, I've packed them all. I'm just going to sell them all here with all of these different tiles. So if you decide to make some of your own or to modify any of these, you can literally just take one, um, if you like. Let's take the first one here and just duplicate that. And once you've duplicated it, I'll press Shift F so we can see what we're looking at. You can just go down here to geometry and obviously modifying this can be a little bit difficult. So you can just reconstruct the sub divs until you get down to something low and then just start making the changes as you see fit. fit. Um, so whatever change you make, uh, however you want to you know, insert loops and do whatever it is you want to do, Obviously, if you're inserting loops, you'll have to delete the subdivisions, do whatever it is you're, you're going to do. And once you're done with that, uh, then all you have to do is actually turn on dynamic subdivision, hit apply, and that will apply that subdivision. And if there's not enough, just divide it again until it's smooth, uh, until you get the result that you're looking for. And feel free to sculpt on this, smooth it, do whatever it is you want to do. Um, and once you're happy with that, save this scene. And then all you need to do is go over here and first off, just hit fix square, just to make sure that it, it is square. And then go over to your tiling object and hit tiling object. And that will reset the whole thing for you and actually generate the new brush for you, or the new alpha rather. So that's the new alpha that's generated and then just click on it and hit export as normal. So very cool tool. And like I said, thanks a million to Tom Tian Hai for making it really, really appreciate it. So how do we go about using these textures? Well, if we have something like a simple sphere, like we just select Sphere 3D and then hit Make Polymers 3D, we're going to get a sphere that actually has UVs on it. So if we scroll down here to UV Map and turn this bump down just so we can see what's going on. If we hit Morph UV, you can see that that's how this UV Map is currently unwrapped. So I'll just hit that again to turn that back on. So with this on, we we effectively have UVs and we can just apply a texture to this as we would in any other 3D app. So you can just go down and you can click on the texture map thumbnail here and then hit import, select one of the images. And then once you have one of the images there, you can see that that's how it is on the actual object. So it's been applied to the UVs that are on there. Now, if you don't like the tiling of this, you can go to your UV map and you can change this repeat You can drag this up and down both vertically and horizontally until you get the look that you're looking for. You're going to get a seam like this if you don't use whole numbers or fractions of numbers, like anything from 0.25 uh, up to 0.5 or 1 or 2, etc. So base, sorry, 2. So if you do that, you're not going to get any seams if you have these evenly uh, sized uh, faces. Now they don't have to be the same. This could be four and this could be two, but as long as there's the same amount of, uh, that, that they go up in multiples of 0.25 as a minimum basically, because the maps are square. So once you have this and you've decided what, it, what it's like, then we, we basically have a low, relatively low resolution mesh with this texture on, but we can't actually deform this surface yet. So regardless of what we want, of what we want to use here, how big we want this to be, let's say we make them, something like this. To actually apply this to the mesh, we're going to need more geometry. So we're gonna go, need to go to here and just say, divide this once, twice, and we bring our polygon count up to something decent. Let's say a couple of million, should be more than enough for what we're looking for here. And because this is a texture, we need to convert this texture into a mask now, uh, some way to actually apply that. So what we can do is we can go down to polypaint and polypaint has the option to create a polypaint from the texture. So this is basically vertex colors. So if I hit this button now, it's going to tell you that RGB mode is off. So basically you need to have paint mode turned on. So all you need to do is turn on RGB or MRGB. Either one will do. And then just hit polypaint from texture. And nothing seems to have happened. But what has actually happened is that it's, it's, it's basically created polypaint information. And that's it here. 
While it did that, it also went down to your texture map and turned off your texture map. So this is now turned off, this is effectively gone, and your poly painting is turned on. Here. So now we have poly paint, what we can do is we can go down to our masking and say, well, I want to mask by the intensity of whatever's currently on the map of the poly paint. Um, so if we click on that, that's now our mask. So our mask is on and our poly paint on, which can be a little bit confusing. So if I turn off our poly paint by hitting this, you can see that's the mask that we have. And now from here, we can go down to deformation and just choose to inflate this to whatever degree that we want to do. So that's how we're going to use this. As well as that, what you could do is you could add additional masks yourself. You don't have to use everything that's here and then, you know, before you actually inflate and then just inflate whatever parts that you need to inflate. So you can create whatever designs you want there. So that's one way to use it um, on an object with UVs. So you can choose the tiling yourself. So say, for example, here I have some bodies. So here I have some snake bodies with these applied and then I'm basically just using the exact same thing. Uh, so I'm using the UVs and I'm tiling them across this. So the way to do that is to start off with something like a helix. I basically effectively just clicked on one of these. If you click here and you just say, well, I just want to start off with a helix. That's it here. And then from here, you can change the coverage of your helix. This is going to be unwrapped by ZBrush by default, which is great. So you can start playing around with, you know, where it's thicker and thinner. And if you want it to be thicker at the bottom or at the top or whatever, like so. There's a lot of control over a helix like this and how how many times it, it turns, all that kind of stuff. So if you want to generate some shapes, this is one simple way of, of generating one particular kind of shape and, and the UVs will be generated for you. So once you're done, you can just say, make Polymesh 3D and we now have a sculptable mesh with UVs on them. So if you ever want to see those UVs, you can just go to UV map. I always turn down my bump and then just hit Morph UV and you'll see that that's unwrapped. So with that unwrapped, we can go down to our texture map, click our texture, load one of our bumps. It'll be on it here. If we want to change the tiling of that, we go to a UV map and we'll increase our tiling and our repetition here yeah, until we get something that we like, but preferably in straight in uh, round numbers. So seven and two, for example, um, will give us a good result. And then from there, we do the same thing we did before where we say, well, we have this as texture. I'm going to need more geometry. So I'm going to divide this a couple of bunch of times till we get up to a decent amount. And once I have that, then I can say, say, let's go down to poly paint and poly paint from texture. RGB is on, so that's going to work. So that's now that we have poly paint as texture, our texture map has been turned off and we can go to masking and we can just say mask by intensity. And knowing that this is already done, we go to deformation and we just inflate. And we now have this kind of res uh, this kind of result. So we can turn off our poly paint if you want to see that a little bit clearer, but that's how we're going to get those scales across our model. If we had generated a morph target before then, so I'm just going to undo this. If at this stage, before I actually used the deflate, we went down to morph target and hit store morph target. Then when we go up to deformation and we inflate this, we can change to a morph brush, B, M, G. And with the morph brush, that will basically paint it back to what it was previously. So that's literally going to, we'll just turn off our uh, poly paint information here. And it didn't actually select that morph brush for B, M, G. And with that, now you'll see that it's basically going to paint back that morph there. Now it looks like we still have this thing going on here. And that's because if we go down to poly paint, we still have that turned on, uh, which is effectively the same as turning this on or off here. Um, and we still have a mask, so I can control and drag to get rid of that mask. And now we can morph safely, knowing we're getting rid of uh, whatever stuff that we don't want. So for, for example, if this were a snake or a dragon and you didn't want some on the belly, as it's, as it's curling around here, you can morph that out um, and make it an interior part, for example. So yeah, that's how we get the tiles on. That's one way of doing it. Another way is to use surface noise. So if we choose a sphere, we hit make polymesh 3D. So we're back to having, back to having a sphere. 
I'll just change back to a standard brush to avoid that annoying message. We start back to a standard sphere. So from here, we can go to surface. Because we have UVs on this, we can just say noise, turn on noise, tell it to use the UVs, click on the alpha on off, choose one of our alphas. That will put it on here. We'd have to increase the strength to see it and you'll see that it mixes basic noise in here. So you want to get rid of that by dialing that down. Uh, getting rid of it all together. And now we can start changing the scale of our alphas and the intensity of the alpha. Again, numbers that are multiples of 0.25 would work. You won't see any visible seams on that. So if we go up to here up to 0.5, for example, we'll have a good result as well. Unfortunately, with this method, you don't really get to tile because any tiling that you have is for noise inside um, this utility rather than actually outside the map. But you do now have um, that on your map based on whatever scale that you had. But this is just a preview. This is literally just a bump map essentially. So from here, if you actually want to apply it to the mesh, if you do it now, we still don't have enough resolution on that. We would still have to go up to geometry and divide this up until we get enough polygons to come back to surface noise and say, apply to mesh. And that will actually deform it for us. You do have the option of just saying, well, just mask it based on that noise, and that will generate the mask for us, which point we can go back to our deformation and decide to inflate that however much we want or deflate it, however much you want. Beauty of this is again, that you can just add to your own mask. If you decide I don't want this area to be affected for whatever reason, and um, you can just paint that out holding down control and then decide to inflate or deflate and it will create that everywhere else. So surface noise is the, pretty much the same thing as using a texture and then converting it to poly paint and then converting that into a mask. <laughs> uh, but the, the texture option gives you the option to change the tiles quite a bit. So as I said, there are 16 of these. Um, you can download them from the Gumroad page for free. If you want to throw me a euro or two, I'm not going to complain. But absolutely take, get them down for free if you want. The ZBrush file is there so you can modify some and create some more of your own if you want to. Personally, I found it very frustrating that I couldn't find anything like this online for free. So that's why I've created this. So please don't try and profit off it by trying to sell them on. They're decent resolution at 2000 by 2000 pixels each. And um, it's the kind of thing that normally people do pay for. So, you know, be nice and don't, don't try and sell it on kind of thing. It is for free. Feel free to drop Ton Tian Hai a few quid if you want. Uh, he does sell his tools for $8 up here. There's a set of tools and they look very cool. It's worth checking out. So definitely have a look at that as well. And don't forget to drop me a comment if you found them useful and subscribe, like all the usual YouTube stuff. All right, cheers. Bye.